and welcome in today's discussion. The topic for today's discussion is ICT mediated professional development of teachers. I am Dr. Gaurav Singh from School of Education IGNU, your course instructor. And today I will talk about the basic ideas that how ICT mediated professional development is possible for the school teachers. Though there are opportunities for school teachers as well as for college teachers, but in today's discussion, I will basically talk about only the opportunities for school teachers. Dear teachers, there is a very famous quote of Alvin Toffler, which is one American futurist. And what Toffler said, that illiterates of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. This quote is very much applicable for teachers because in our teaching learning scenario, everyday things are changing. New technologies are coming, new teaching methods are coming, even sometimes new policies, new curriculum frameworks are coming. And we generally do our teacher training program at once at the starting. But to equip ourselves with new development, to make ourselves ready to deal with the new things, sometimes we need to unlearn the older things and learn the new things. So this quote is equally important for continuous professional development of teachers, that for continuous professional development, every teacher need to learn, unlearn and relearn. Why we are talking about continuous professional development? Because through continuous professional development, teachers acquire, develop and strengthen their skills. Their teaching learning skills, their assessment skills, their classroom management skills, their skills to handle new technologies and ICTs, skills to interact with the learners. Because during a teacher training program, you study certain basic skills of teaching process, but with the time, things are changing. New opportunities and new challenges are coming, not only in terms of technology or not only in terms of policy interventions, but the social interference and society is also changing with the time. So when society changes, same changes are replicated in our students. And when they come to school, in our classrooms, they replicate similar type of behavior. In order to manage their behavior, we need to learn certain new skills. So for that also, we require continuous professional development. Sometimes some sudden situation arises, like due to some disease or due to some pandemic like thing, there may be anxiety among learners. There may be issues related to their mental health. You need to deal with such situations also. For that, if you are not a skilled, you need continuous professional development. So you need continuous professional development continuously in your profession until or unless you are a professional. So actually teachers through continuous professional development know that how to become more effective. So CPD brings more effectiveness in yourself. That's why we always say that continuous professional development is an ongoing lifelong learning process. There is a very famous proverb that teacher is a teacher until he or she is a learner. So it means that teacher always learns, keep on learning, keep on improving, sometimes formally, sometimes informally, all comes under your professional development. There are many ways for professional development. But if I am talking about ICT mediated professional development, then it includes many things like access to the resources. Where are the resources which are available? How ICT can help you to assess those resources, the resources which you can use in your teaching learning in your classroom, the resources which you use to facilitate the learning of your learners, the resources which you can use to do the assessment of your learners. There are many types of resources. Then 
ICTs basically facilitate in interaction and collaboration. Interaction with the learners, interaction with the peers, interaction with the society and community. Similarly, collaborative learning takes place. You collaborate with your colleagues, not only from your own institution, from your own school, but from other schools also, even across the city also, because ICT opens a broaden uh, framework for you, it's, it gives you a lot of opportunities. ICT gives you a lot of opportunities to interact with the people, to collaborate with the people across the globe. Then on ICT mediated continuous professional development, there are many dedicated professional development programs which are mainly ICT mediated, I will talk about those also. So ICT mediated continuous professional development basically provides you lifelong learning opportunity for your learners. Let us talk all these things one by one. If we are talking about access to the dedicated resources, then for school teachers, there are two very good portals. One is National Repository of Open Educational Resources, NROER which is being managed by National Council for Educational Training and Research, NCRT. So if you visit NROER site, you can find both types of the opportunity. Means you can find the resources, textbooks, images, videos, animations, experiments, all these things which you can use to facilitate your teaching learning in your classroom to your learners. So, if you have better resources, your professional development will definitely will be better. So NROER provides you access to the dedicated resources as well as NROER also provides you opportunity to team or collaborate with the other colleagues from different schools or different institutions of the country to create content. When you create content, when you contribute content, it also brings development in your professional abilities. So that is also a part of continuous professional development. Similarly, if you visit the Sakshat portal of government of India, this is basically a one step, one stop place for you. If you visit in Sakshat, Sakshat will redirect you to many digital resources or digital initiatives of government of India which Ministry of Education has developed in past few years. It will redirect you to Swayam, to Swayam Prabha, to EPG Patshala, to NROER, to National Digital Library, to Virtual Lab. All digital initiatives of Government of India can be accessed through this one portal that is called Saksha. So for teachers, the school teachers, if you want to access different resources, these two are very good platforms. One is NROER, where you can find subject related content, subject specific content, whereas Sakshat, from where you can access all the initiatives of Government of India, which are related to education and continuous professional development. So these two are very good resources. Then comes the use of ICTs for interaction and collaboration. How you can interact and collaborate with your colleagues around the globe on different aspects. Your very old, very reliable and very good friend is Wikipedia. You can create wiki pages. Not only you can create your own wiki pages, if there are wiki pages on some topics or on some concepts, you can contribute to those pages with your knowledge, with your reliable resources. You can access those pages to get recent information about that particular concept and you can utilize it in your classroom. So wiki are a very good collaborative tools. Wikis are very good collaborative tools. You search wikis, you create wikis, you contribute on wiki pages, it all will help you in your professional development. Blogs are also good tools for interaction and collaboration nowadays. You can start your blog where you can share your experiences. You can subscribe the blogs of the teachers who used to share their experiences, who used to share their new ideas, new things, new experiments, 
which they are conducting. So this is a kind of peer-to-peer -peer learning and peer-to-peer -peer support. You provide opportunity to learn from you to others as well as you learn from others by reading their blogs, by following their blogs. There are certain dedicated discussion groups and forums on different platforms. Some are on MOOC platforms, some are on some social media platforms. I will talk about those later. But discussion groups and forums, especially if the discussion groups are very dedicated, discipline specific or subject specific groups. For example, it can be a telegram group, it can be a WhatsApp group, it can be any, any group. So, ICT provides an opportunity to share, to interact, to learn from each other and to contribute in the knowledge corpus of your colleagues. So you create a knowledge corpus where everyone can contribute according to his or her capacity and according to his or her knowledge. And thus we learn from each other collaboratively. So ICT can also be used for your professional development through interaction and collaboration. Though these efforts are not much institutionalized, most of such efforts you will see that they are individualistic in nature. Each individual teacher is creating his or her wiki page or blogs or it can be a professional association who are making a discussion group or the forum. Then comes the social networking. Nowadays social networking is very popular. Very popular means you will hardly find a person who is not on any social networking website. You can be a part of Facebook, which is the most popular. You can be a part of Twitter. You may be a part of LinkedIn, which is basically a professional social network or there are many other networks also. So how social networking helps in professional development? Social networking basically helps you through communication, through sharing the information and building and maintaining the relationships. Because when we are talking about the professional development, professional development is not about only the content enrichment. Content enrichment is one criteria of professional development. But along with content enrichment, we create our network of the colleagues. We share many things which may not be related to content, but which are important to impart the content. So you may talk about methods, you may talk about strategies, you may talk about teaching learning materials, you may talk about the problems which you are facing in your class, you may be facing a particular problem, maybe some other teacher in some other city in the some other school is also facing the same problems. So social networking provides you an opportunity to share your issues, share your concerns and learn from each other. So what you can do on social networking sites, you can share, you can communicate, you can read others views. You can comment on their views, you can update your information, you can critically analyze and criticize and also you can suggest anything which if someone wants to do that. So social networking again is a very good tool for professional development of teachers. How you can utilize social networking? Either you can be a part of any professional group. Professional group means that can be a group of physics teachers. It can be a formal association like Indian Association of Physics Teachers. Indian Association of English Teachers, Indian Association of Teacher Educators, so such kind of Indian Association of Online Teachers. So many, many such professional groups are there on different Facebook pages and on other social networking platforms. So you can join those groups where professionals from a particular field discusses and share their experiments, their views, their ideas and the new developments in your field. So if you are, if you are a part of professional development, so if you are a part of any professional group on social networking site, you can enrich your knowledge and you can develop professionally. Sometimes some teachers who are very innovative teachers who always experiment, they create their individual pages. It can be a Facebook page, it can be on any other site, LinkedIn page or it can be on uh, any other website also. So what they upload there, they upload their best practices, their experiments, their lectures, their talks, their ideas. So you can follow such pages who are good professional pages of individuals and you can learn from there. Sometimes now institutions are also coming up and institutions are also having their official pages. 
like you are watching this live from IGNU official page. Similarly, many institutions are having their official Facebook pages or official LinkedIn pages where they share the resources. They provide you the opportunity to learn in live sessions and they share the opportunities for professional development if any available at that particular institution like they are organizing any webinar, seminar, conference. Those are also the opportunities for professional development. Then there are some knowledge sharing communities. What do you mean by knowledge sharing communities? Online platforms are communities where a teacher can share and get useful materials. For example, if you are teaching through PowerPoint presentations and you are making very good quality of PowerPoint slides. Suppose you want to share those slides with all other colleagues of the country. If you want that other students can also see these PPTs, learn from these PPTs. Then there are many platforms like SlideShare. On SlideShare, what you can do, you can share your slides either with copyright or with CC license, it's up to you. But my suggestion is that if you are sharing something on a knowledge sharing community, that too to share and facilitate the learning of the learners and your colleagues, then upload it with a CC license or Creative Commons license. So slide share is a good opportunity. Then in academics, there is a very good platform called Academia, where many academics and researchers upload their published research work, research papers, thesis, dissertations, action research reports. So through Academia, we can access new knowledge in the area which is being shared by our colleagues. Similarly, if we have published any good paper, we have published any good anecdote or some action research we have conducted and it is published, we can also share our own. So it is again a sharing community where all share their works and all can access each other's work. Then for sharing the videos, uh, there is a very good uh, platform called TeacherTube, which is similar to YouTube. So there, uh, the benefit is that on TeacherTube, we will find the content which is categorized in subjects. Like if you click on science, only videos related to science will appear. If you will click on mathematics, only videos related to mathematics will appear. If you will click on history, the videos related to history will appear. So through knowledge sharing communities, like SlideShare, Academia, TeacherTube and many other communities, you can enhance your skills, you can develop professionally with your professional colleagues. Then nowadays, webinars are also good tools. You know, webinars are being used to share the new information, to share the new knowledge. And from there, where this webinar term has emerged, webinar term has emerged basically with the amalgamation of two terms web and seminar. So if a seminar is being organized by using the web platforms, it becomes webinar. So where colleagues come together, they share their experiments, their experiences. And the benefit of the webinar is sometimes e-conferences are also there. The benefit is that participants can contribute from their own workplace. So you need not to travel from one place to another place to share your ideas, to share your work, even if you are at your workplace, you are in your college, and you are in your school, and if there is a webinar which is going on related to your topic, you can contribute your paper, you can share your paper, you can discuss about your experiments from your own place. So this is a good opportunity. Then the second benefit of the webinar is that there is no restriction on the number of participants due to virtual space. So suppose if 1000 teachers want to participate and they want to learn about new things from you, all can be allowed because there is no restriction on the learning. Though there may be some criticism that how 1000 people can be managed. It is not up to you. If they want to learn, they will learn. If they do not want to learn, they will not learn. Learning is always individualistic. So the benefit of the e-conferences and webinars is that every participant can share his or her views with all and get immediate feedback and comment on the posts or the sharing which he or she is sharing. Then the, another benefit of e-conference or webinar is that the whole proceeding could be archived for future use. For example, if you are conducting a webinar by using any conferencing software, you can record it, you can place it on any other web platform. So even if your conference or webinar is over 
its recording can be accessed by the teachers by the colleagues by the candidates to benefit from it in future also and both types of communication is possible in e conferences and webinars synchronous as well as asynchronous as i have told you that recorded sessions are available for the future reference then if there are webinars they may easily find out they means the participant or the people can easily figure out and find out that the activity which is going on in this conference or webinar is of my use or not sometimes you might have observed that people participate in a number of webinars but they hardly attend a few with seriousness because they explore many options because in terms of webinar options are plenty then they find which one is more suitable more beneficial for them and they attend that many boundaries are dissolved like the regional national or international because you can organize a webinar and you can put it on any web platform you can uh, stream it live on whatsapp or facebook or sorry you can stream it live on facebook on youtube and on other streaming platforms so even the participants not only from your country not only from your state but also from the other states and other countries can participate it also enriches the content because when many people are contributing and sharing their ideas from different places from many countries then they share their own experiences they share their own ex uh, experiments so you learn from each other through these webinars so these are also a good tool of continuous professional development of teachers then the next is online workshops nowadays along with the webinars and uh, e conferences online workshops are being used and being organized Be specifically the areas in which hands on or some training is required for example if you want to develop the ict skills among your teachers among your colleagues across the schools across the countries across the institutions across a particular organization you can organize online workshops of one week or five days duration you can have a one or two hour session every day for some demonstration then you can give them an opportunity to create something which they have learned in that particular session in next one or two hour then you can give them again an opportunity to share their experiences and their difficulties while working on a particular software or while working on a particular skill which they have earned and they can resolve their queries with the help of experts so basically uh, you can organize online workshops to enhance your abilities to deal with the online classroom situations the benefit of the online workshop is that you do hands on practices at your own place a collaborative learning and peer assessment is a key of online workshops because you learn from your participants sometime there are certain activities where a group or a small group of teachers collaborate with each other to create something and peer assessment is also there and the most important benefit of online workshops is that a large number of participants can be accommodated then there are some dedicated professional development programs also especially for the school teachers you all know about nistha that is national initiative for school heads and teachers holistic advancement this nistha project is basically a project which is being managed by ncert on behalf of ministry of education it is a capacity building program for improving the quality of school education through integrated teacher training and it aimed at basically the training of 42 lakh teachers which are teaching up to elementary level in different schools of the country in this program the focus is that through this program teachers should learn to improve the learning outcomes of the students teachers should learn to create an enabling and enriching inclusive classroom environment and they also learn to use art as a pedagogy leading to increase the creativity and innovation among the students if you read the main objectives of nistha you will also find that it is it has been mentioned there that nistha is trying to create a healthy and safe school environment and to facilitate the teachers to integrate the ict in their teaching learning and assessment nistha is also focusing on developing the stress free school based assessment focused on development of learning competencies among the students 
so historically trying to bring activity based learning in the classrooms and move away from rote learning to the competency based learning so there is a shift from rote learning to competency based learning so nista is trying to develop the competency among the teachers so that they follow the competence competency based learning opportunities and facilitate the learning of their learners in the schools nista is also focusing on transformation of heads of the schools into providing the academic and administrative leadership for the schools for fostering new initiatives so if you read the nista and if you visit the nista's website you will find a lot of resources are there they are organizing small training programs large training programs online courses multiple things are there which basically facilitating our school teachers to enhance their professional capacities or capabilities that's why nista is a dedicated professional development portal for school teachers then another very good uh, opportunity for professional development of the teachers is india's own mooc platform that is called swayam if you visit the website swayam.gov.in you will find that in swayam the online courses are there and in every swayam course we follow basically four quadrant approach if you enroll yourself in any swayam course for the professional development you will find that there are videos at the main content delivery component then there is some e text it can be a word file it can be a pdf file it can be a audio file or it can be simple html text on the web page then there are self assessment there can be tests small quizzes on every week or at the end of every module and there will be a discussion forum which is a online discussion platform where every week your course instructor is placing a question or some discussion points and all the participants or all the school teachers who are participating on a swayam course share their ideas share their experiences with respect to that discussion point and in this way we learn from each other so discussion forum is a good tool for collaborative learning and learning from each other's experiences if you see that swayam is very popular nowadays and more than 1.5 crore people have already enrolled in different swayam courses and it is gaining the importance day by day if i talk about the professional development opportunities for school teachers and the teachers uh, there are many courses like in ignu we are offering the courses like learning and teaching where more than 6000 teachers have already enrolled and they are using uh, this course for their professional development because this course is basically helping them in understanding what is learning who is learner what are the characteristics of learning how teaching takes place how to manage and organize classroom management then how to plan how to develop the assessment strategies and what is the role of a teacher teacher is a reflective practitioner teacher is an action researcher so such kind of journalistic courses are also there even on swayam you will find many pedagogy courses also which you can use for your professional development like there is a course on pedagogy of science in this course you can see that till now more than 2300 uh, teachers have already joined this course so the teachers who are teaching science they are utilizing this opportunity this course so on swayam if you will explore you will find many courses and many programs which are for school teachers for college teachers so how you can use swayam for continuous professional development you can find some pedagogy specific swayam courses and you can enroll yourself in the courses as i have i have shown you the example of science course you may find a course on social science you may find a course on english you may find a course on ict so many things are there then on swayam there is a possibility that in future the dedicated short term course can be developed it can be a four week five week course it can be one credit course two credit course small capsule course for school teachers which in which teachers can enroll themselves and they learn then there are for higher education teachers there is a possibility of continuous professional development through a scheme called swayam arpit so in arpit also teachers can enroll themselves they complete the course and they can do the continuous professional development now the next opportunity for continuous professional development is 34 educational television channels under the project swayam prabha swayam prabha is also providing you a uh, professional development opportunities so here you can see that now there are 34 educational uh, television channels 12 for school education and 22 for higher education nowadays 
uh, the channel 20 basically provides you a professional development opportunity because it deals with uh, teacher education along with uh, SOUs. So on this channel, you may find a lot of video programs which are related to your discipline in teacher education, different topics. You can access these channels through DD Freedish, through Dish TV, through Geo TV in your mobile and you can watch the TV programs, uh, 30 minutes video programs which are coming there. And there are a lot of videos available. You can see that many teacher educators of the country has contributed their uh, programs, their video programs on that platform. So how you can use Swayam Prabha for your continuous professional development? You can align the teaching learning with Swayam Prabha schedule. So if a teacher training institution is offering any in-service teacher training program, and if there are videos on the Swayam Prabha on the same schedule, they can align it with that. Uh, they can use Swayam Prabha in the teacher training colleges. So if you are offering any short term course or short term program, you can use Swayam Prabha there and Swayam Prabha videos can be utilized. You can integrate Swayam Prabha with a dedicated continuous professional development program like you can offer a continuous professional development program in any institution and institution offering the video of that program through Swayam Prabha TV channel that is also a possibility. And if a teacher contribute to Swayam Prabha channel in form of an expert to deliver any video lecture, it is also considered as continuous professional development opportunity for a teacher. So dear teachers, I must say that ICT has provided us a lot of opportunities in different forms, either the professional development at individualistic level, at personal level or institutional level. There are dedicated courses for professional development, dedicated programs for professional development through NISTHA, through Swayam, through uh, ARPIT or there are many webinars, seminars, e-webinars, e-conferences, e-workshops through which you can enhance your skills, you can learn new things. So, dear teachers, utilize all these opportunities which are coming to you through ICTs and be ready to become a lifelong learner. Thank you very much.